Hello, everyone. Great to be here. Uh, my name is Jakob Eberhard, and I work at uh, TU Berlin in the Information Systems Engineering Group. And we've heard such great talks today, which brought the setup phase uh, to the next level, I think, which will make it in the future hopefully feasible to run your own setup for your own circuit. And with that, bring CK Snarks actually uh, to the practice so you can use it. So what we did with the Social Dust project is to see what we can do with the new precompiles on Ethereum, how we can use them to actually do something useful in the network. And it's currently a research prototype, but we can already do some things. So the end goal is to have a nice domain-specific language and some tooling to actually be able to use NARCs. And I want to show you some of that today. So I won't go into detail about the Socrates toolbox because I did a talk on Wednesday already, but just as a quick wrap up. So the vision is to provide a usable abstraction and tooling for CK Snarks that integrates nicely uh, with Ethereum and it's supposed to support the full process. That means from specifying your program code up to the point where you validate the execution of that code or the correctness of the execution of that code on the blockchain in their knowledge. So what does it feature at the moment? At the moment, it's a domain-specific higher-level language, not terribly powerful yet. I'm talking to people about what the feature should be, how we can extend it, and what makes sense. At the moment, it's still quite limited, and the compiler which transforms these conditions into constraint systems we can use to do proofs on. Um, also, it provides some support with the uh, setup phase. At this point, this is a trusted setup, and that's why I'm so excited to hear about the efforts by the Zcash guys to make a distributed setup phase actually usable, because I think then we could actually make applications use this technology. So that's like really cool. I'm really excited. I hope this uh, works well in the future and brings them to developers as fast as possible. It also, the tool also helps to generate witnesses and with that to find solutions for your constraint system, generate proof and export Solidity smart contracts so you will actually be able to check the proofs on the blockchain. So the language uh, I covered in my other talk, so just briefly, uh, the, the primary data type you have is prime field elements. So think of positive numbers that are larger than, uh, smaller than one huge prime number. And of course, you can simulate uh, binary circuits with that, which is just not very efficient because you only use one and zero instead of uh, a larger set. And you have imperative statements, you have assertions, you have loops, conditionals, and functions which allow you to structure code nicely, but there's no recursion at that point. That would be doable with uh, things like TinyRAM, which is a really cool concept, but the proofs just seem to be a bit too expensive for uh, applications at this point. Um, so what's the process? How do you use Socrates? This is based on the command line interface, the slide you're seeing here. So you have high level code and then you compile that to a constraint system basically. And then based on that constraint system, you can find the solution for that constraint system based on either private or public inputs. You decide which part of that you make public. Um, so that's the witness computation. And then it supports at this point only a local trusted setup. I hope there will be some distributed process in the future supported um, that allow you to generate a verification key and a proving key. These are circuit specific. So you do that once for one computation you specified up here basically. And then you can export that verification key into a Solidity smart contract, which will then allow you to check the proofs on the blockchain. The proofs you can then actually check with that is the proofs you generated by using a witness, a solution for your constraint system, satisfying variable assignment, together with the proving key. And based on that, you can generate a proof which shows that you evaluated your constraint system correctly and with that executed your program correctly, but also you can uh, provide or um, publish part of the inputs you used, your public inputs, but you can also keep part of that private so you don't have to reveal it to the public. Um, who of you has seen Christian talk, Christian's talk in the morning? 
Okay, that's a lot. Very good. Mm. So Christian introduced the Sudoku example. And what I want to do in this workshop session is to show you how you can uh, specify a Sudoku checker in that language and how you can actually uh, then check whether someone found a solution for your Sudoku system on your theorem. So let's do that. Um, so here we have a given solution. I just copied that from uh, Christian. I didn't find it myself. Um, so the question now is, how can we use Socrates to prove we know a solution to the Sudoku system without revealing it to the public? So essentially, we want to show that there is a solution for a given system. And how can we verify that on chain? Okay, so first we need to model our problem a little bit. So we have a Sudoku, a mini Sudoku, and it consists of subsquares. And um, I've used uh, letters for them. So we have subsquare A, B, C, and D. And then we just number our variables to uh, build that kind of matrix structure. And then we have to define the validity conditions for a Sudoku system. So what would that be? First, we have to guarantee that values are in one, two, three, four in this set. So other values are not allowed. And then we have to make sure that we have unique values in rows, in columns, and in subsquares. So each of these values can occur or has to occur exactly once in each subsquare, column, and row. So how do we put that uh, down as conditions? So we first define a validate input function, and this returns zero if the value is in one, two, three, or four. It does it by multiplication. Um, and then we assert, that's condition down here, that all inputs um, satisfy that condition so that we actually only have one, two, three, four in our system. Um, then we need a uniqueness check. So we need to compare all the elements with each other and with that make sure that, um, that there's no duplicate entries in either rows, columns, or subsquares. So that's the conditions we have to check for uh, entries and then we put that together. We define one global counter in that constraints or in that, in that system. And then we check these conditions. These checks return zero if they're all different. So we just do that for subsquares. We do it for rows. We do it for columns. And in the end, we assert that the counter is zero. And if the counter is zero in the end, we know for sure that the Sudoku uh, has or that the inputs we had were a valid solution for our Sudoku uh, puzzle. So one more thing here, what we had given as our task is to solve this puzzle here on the left side. What we have also is our internal modeling structure, how we modeled that in the code. And now we have to specify which of these points are given. So we kind of have to say, okay, this is the puzzle we have to solve. And we do that by specifying input parameters in our main functions that are later the, the public inputs that become public uh, together with the proof. And in that case, we have A21, for example, this entry is three because that's what we see in the system here. So that's how we specify um, that part and then for the solution we have private inputs two one four four one three one two one three that's the solution I showed earlier right that's just how you fill out the others to come up with a valid solution and now I want to do something that's always discouraged when giving talks I want to do a live demo <laughs> So I'll have to put this down. I hope you can still hear me. I'll just give it a try. If not, you let me know. Oh, wow. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> OK, I guess that's why I paid the next thing here. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't see it right here, but I'll look over there. and. I hope that it works. <laughs> yeah. OK, I'll just try to turn mirroring on real quick, if I can find my mouse. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that.
Okay, here we go. If you get into the ZK snarks, that's what your desktop is going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at it. Okay. Um, can you read this? Is this okay? All right. Okay. We should be fine now. So, okay. What we have here. Oh, let me remove this uh, real quick. So we have a clean directory state. So what we have here is our Sudoku checker code, right? That's just uh, the set of conditions we have, and I just showed you that on the slide set. And then we have the Socrates tool, which we will now use uh, moving on. So what we do first is we compile these, uh, yeah, these, uh, this program into a set of conditions. So we simply do Socrates compile and give it an input file, and that's a, so a Sudoku uh, checker code and it writes it to another file that's the out.codes, the human readable one. So we can say, see it's a set of human readable equations that are uh, as expressive as a rank one constraint system, but that's not too important for now, so we, we, we compiled it, basically. Um, what we can do now is we can find a witness for this problem, so we essentially need to find a satisfying variable assignment for this set of constraints I just showed you, and we have to do it um, so we can later find a proof. So I do uh, Socrates compute witness, and I have to provide the arguments, uh, which I showed you before, the arguments of the main function here, and I prepared it a little bit so it's faster. Okay, so now we have the public inputs, but the private inputs, we need to specify them still, and uh, here we can do that interactively. So the other parts of private solution, what we actually fill in the Sudoku puzzle, that is what we now have to specify. So I'll just type in what we had in the solution before. So field A11 was a two, then we had a one, then a four, a four again, one, three, one, two, one, three. I will not make a mistake now, but believe me, if I would have made a mistake, this would crash and show me an error, okay? But it would just take too much time, so I immediate, uh, immediately put in uh, uh, private inputs that satisfy the constraint system. So what we have now here is a file that contains a witness, and as you can see, that's just a variable assignment for all of these variables uh, we use in our constraint system before. Okay. Uh, because that's how we model equality checks, because for equality checks, uh, we ask that there is a witness multiplied uh, by, the, uh, by some input is one, so there is the inverse oh, element, and that's in its, its inverse element, so that's what we calculate internally, and that's uh, why there is those huge numbers in, in the system. Okay. Okay, so now what we have is we have a solution to our constraint system, and we have the constraint system, but we have not done a setup phase yet, so that's what we have to do uh, next. And because we do not have a good distributed setup yet, we do local trusted setup. So uh, we do Socrates and setup, and that gives us a verification key and a proving key. We can see that in files, but what's interesting now, we can use a tool to actually generate a Solidity smart contract out of the verification key that we can afterwards use to verify the computation on chain. So let's do that. We do uh, Socrates, um, oh, what's the command? Oh, I show you another nice feature. You can have a command line um, overview here. So it's export verifier. And then, verifier, you get a smart contract, a Solidity smart contract that does then all the necessary checks to um, yeah, validate the solution on chain. So what we do now, I have already deployed that to the Robson test network.
So I, I uploaded the code, so you see I'm not cheating here. So this is actually the smart contract we just generated, only that it uses a different verification key. Um, and here I already did some transactions, but what I want to do now, and I use the Remix IDE for that, is I bind that um, contract that's already deployed to the smart contract I have in here, so I can conveniently use their interface to invoke the smart contract. And then I can here generate a proof based on the witness and the proofing key I already had. And then I get that down here, and I already have it prepared here in a way where the output is formatted nicely and can be directly pasted into the Solidity Web IDE. So I will just paste this down here in my new instance, instance and say verify transactions. That may take one second. Now MetaMask will ask me whether I'm okay with this transaction, so I say, all right, I wanna do it, let's go on Robston. And then we can check the verification contract in case we're still, yeah. So we have a pending transaction here now. And we'll have to wait for it to be mined for just a second. It usually happens quite quickly on Robston. Okay, so it's mined now, let's look into it. Pardon, was it the wrong one? Okay, let me go back, sorry. Oh, here it is, okay, sorry about that. Okay, and here we can go to the event logs and check the message so the event was issued that the transaction was successfully verified. So what we did now is um, we actually checked on chain that we provided a valid solution to the Sudoku puzzle. Uh, what, what's maybe interesting to note here, it was quite expensive though. So it cost uh, 1.8 million uh, gas, so that's quite a lot. On the mainnet, that would mean you could currently do six uh, validations in, in one block, so uh, six verifications in, in one block, and why is that? Let me go back to the slide set real quick. Okay, so what happens? Thank you very much. Uh, we, we generated the proof using the Socrates tool, and that proof has eight elliptic curve points, at least with the current CK SNR construction we use. As I learned today, it could become even uh, less. And then the public inputs, and they are uh, used in the verification smart contract to check the conditions. And for that, you need five pairing checks for um, elliptic curve additions. And uh, depending on the inputs, the number of public inputs you have to generate the custom verification key there, uh, several elliptic curve multiplications. So that's, that are the new pre-compiled contracts that were introduced uh, with by Santium. And uh, this is currently quite expensive, but maybe there will be better constructions that make it even cheaper to verify those proofs on chain. Um, so to sum it up, you can check out the source code, and I'm happy for contributions. I think regarding the domain-specific language, uh, we're, we're at an early stage, right? So it's working, but we would need efficient implementations of hash functions so we can do good commitments. And as Sean pointed out, there might be some other challenges we need to tackle. So we're in contract there. And also an integration of a distributed setup phase will of course be key for adaption, uh, adoption on the network. So you can actually prove things to third parties. And in that case, with a Sudoku example, only I could deploy that thing and, and trust the proofs that someone sends to me because I did the setup and I know I forgot the toxic waste involved. I could not convince a, th a third party of that at that point. So there's still some work to do. Please talk to me if you're interested in that. And thank you very much.